We're glad to know that you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, has condemned uh, the Igbo must go campaign in the southwestern part of Nigeria, calling for a referendum to allow the Igbo people to decide on their exit from Nigeria. IPOB Director of Media and Publicity, Emma Powerful, accused high profile individuals in Lagos State and federal government of supporting the campaign. He criticized Lagos State Governor Babajide Somolo for allegedly acting hypocritically against the campaign while previously targeting Igbo business and properties. The group emphasizes their readiness to pursue a peaceful exit through a referendum, asserting that a forced exit could result in long term hostility and stressing the importance of a democratic process to address their concerns. IPOP highlighted ongoing issues of ethnic profiling and violence against the Igbo community, noting that these have historically led to conflicts and are exacerbated by current economic and political instability. IPOP called on the international community, including human rights organizations and global bodies, to re recognize the threats faced by Igbo people and support their quest for self-determination, urging the Nigerian government to resolve these issues through peaceful means. Our guest this morning to discuss this with us is Mr. Biodun uh, Shoomi, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. It's been with us, this, uh, this uh, profiling, uh, whether perceived or real, but it's been with us for a, a very long time, especially here in Lagos. And we remember um, the immediate one, apart from the, this one that just happened now, the, the very recent one was during the election, where some people were, were told never to come out to vote because uh, they are from a particular ethnic group. And if they come out, there will be war. If they come out, they will be killed and all that. And then instead of acting on that, uh, the, even the police came out and said that uh, uh, the person who said it was just joking. And we did see the violence that followed uh, during the election and all that. Now it has gotten to a point where the Igbos are saying, you know what, because of this, maybe we should just exit Nigeria. What is your take? Well, um, I think... Um if you look at the IPOP statement, IPOP does not represent Igbo. IPOP is just a group. It's just like having Arewa Consultative Assembly or just a my concern, my speaking concern, of My concern is not who spoke, but what the reality on ground is. Yeah. For instance, there's a man who said that Igbo uh, businesses are being targeted and the government is not doing anything about it. Perhaps they should invite IPOP to come from the East to uh, secure these products, you know, and that statement to a lot of people felt like someone who was crying. But till this day, as we are talking, this man is still in jail because they said that was treasonable. He was asking for war and all that. So we're not talking about who said it. We're talking about what the reality on ground is. Whether it is we, IPOP who we, said we, it or not. All, we, we all know that is not true. We all know the revolutions going on currently in Lagos, has no color or tribe or ethnic face. I know people who are complaining about this. Look, my family have a property along the people affected by demolition. I'm not an Igbo person. Look, the issue is, we, if you don't separate, separatist groups, um, campaign strategy, trying to whip up sentiment against you know, the rest of the populace, if you don't separate it and treat it as what it is, we will end up believing that people have been targeted. You are bound to have tensions when you have different people living um, uh, together in any country, no matter what. Currently, there's tension going on in the UK, you know, uh, between uh, uh, ethnics, and you can't avoid that. And when you get to a situation where we now begin to forget history, then it becomes worrying. Let me give you a good example. In the, in the, in the, in the last civil war, which we had, we had in Nigeria, the records are there that Igbo businesses were not seized and properties were not never seized in Lagos. That uh, in the southwest general, that, that those properties were kept for them at the end of the civil war. They even accounted for the rent. And then the, the properties were returned to the owners. No record of one property seized in the owner of Southwell. So we should begin to understand why some of these things does not have any historical roots, unlike what I probably saying. In the recent times, 
we have also had some people clamoring in order to cause tension, saying that, look, the ghost is a no man's land. You know, you have all those arguments also, which we have from the other side. And we are not, as everybody know, there is no place called no man's land. Everywhere has an indigenous population, which we must respect. The conflict going on in UK currently is between the indigenous British people and, you know, the, the migrants ethnic into that country, caused by an unfortunate incident of somebody stabbing um, a, a, an indigenous person. So this kind of tension is not unique, but we should avoid playing the game and playing falling into the hands, you know, of, of um, a separatist group particularly group who have adopted violence as a means of propagating their people. There's nothing wrong, absolutely, with um, tensions. We have to doubt those tensions. We have to address the concerns, you know, of whoever is racist. I mean, I am not oblivious of the fact that the Oba of Lagos made a statement in the past, yeah. which many people found objectionable. It does not mean that the Oba of Lagos spoke for the whole of the South, the South West. And also, the, the allegation being made is, is the thing is, that is that our concern is not what is the historical thing. Uh, yeah. it, it is it's the fact that politically this has been used as a tool. And now, the response of the government towards this is what we are concerned about. Because you talked about the Oba. He didn't make the statement on an ordinary day. It was during an election that he made that statement. And it, it, it was left to slight. Okay, in the previous election, these statements were made, and the police, like I said, said that it was a joke. Now, there is a slogan that has been going on, Igbo must go. Even the governor has come out to address that these people will face the music if they are caught doing this thing, which means there's a, a truism that that statement has been made. So, I'm trying to look at the response of government, the response of those in authority to this kind of uh, separatist agenda, um, are you comfortable with it or not? It's not that whether it has happened or not. It has happened. But the way it is being responded to, is it the correct way or there's a better way to do that? Because we can't have that. You have, you're only listening to one side of it. If you listen to the, some uh, Yoruba extremist talks, they will tell you, Uwayawu, in the Gouli that said Yoruba are rascals, they will tell you they said Lagos is a no man's land, that they are depriving them of their space. All these are being sponsored by estimates. You have estimates on both sides. And what we need to do is not to fall into that script and be careful about playing their agenda. This agenda is being dictated not, you know, by the majority of the people. I don't believe that the majority of the Igbo people would actually want to exit Nigeria or exit Southwest. And I don't believe that the majority of the Southwesterners, that is the Yoruba people, you know, really you know, we would want you go to leave. Why would you want to go to leave? I, I don't even really think so. But the agenda is being set by, by some other people. Both sides you hear one complain or the other. And I'm saying that it's not unusual to have that. Even at times you have this tension between the Fulanese and other ethnic groups in Nigeria. Everything is Fulani or is Hausa Fulani. Even Hausa are now beginning to say, look, we are not Fulani, we are Hausa. You know, and these are usual things. The response is always not, you know, to uh, blow it off because it's always very, very complicated. And governors are very, very careful in admin and in ethnic issues because two of the major things that would lead to a breakup of any country is religion and ethnicity. So governors are extremely very careful. I'm not defending the government uh, by any means. And but you need to understand why a governor would not want to, you know, find the embassy of uh, this court. Rather, it would have to threaten that look. People are caught, they will be there to which is correct. But government action should not be interpreted as being anti ego Go to Leki and see how many Yoruba people's no, properties are affected. That's what I'm you know, asking. By it's not being anti ego Is it enough? Okay, Biyadu, um, you know, what you've said now is tensions are bound to happen, but statements like this are what can cause war. They can cause anarchy. They can just skyrocket to something else. How do we make sure that the, we curtail this? How is the government supposed to have a response to this to ensure that it doesn't escalate to a place that we don't even want it to be? Because if people are saying Igbos must go, and then the Igbos are saying, you know what, now it's time for us to go, it could just be into something else. So how do we curtail that? Uh, look, it's very clear that government 
would have to deal decisively with um, um, uh, extremists. There's nothing wrong in a group of people or anybody coming up to say, listen, we want to exit Nigeria, we need a referendum. That's fine. I don't have issues with that. As long as you're not employing powerless, you know, as a tool to project your viewpoint, yeah. you know, that is okay with me. But in order to even do that, you need it. <laughs> they, they to collect the views of the people and know that the vast majority of the people actually wants that. If that is what is wanted by the book, I don't have a problem. Can, even Yoruba or Fulani or Osaka demand for a referendum uh, in order to exit uh, Nigeria. There's not, no problem with that as long as it's peaceful. The only problem I have is that it is more complex, you know, when you have an orchestrated campaign by a group who already has exhibited violence, you know, to now be demanding that, you know, they want a referendum. So why embrace violence in the first instance? That is my own worry. But government on its own part needs to deal decisively, irrespective of ethics, those who are advocating, you know, um, um, uh, for breakup, you know, violently. But for people who are campaigning peacefully uh, for referendum, I don't see what is wrong with it because if you look at the United Nations Charter, it's actually in line with it. The right to uh, of, of countries to to self determination is is enshrined in the UN Charter. It's also in the African Peoples' uh, Rights Charter. So there's nothing illegal with that, as long as it's done peacefully and advocated peacefully. Okay. I, I was just asking, what else should the government do? Because everybody was afraid when it started during the election that it might be something that will continue if it is not nipped in the bud. And this has happened again. So I'm just asking whether the response of government is enough. Well, if it is, if it is not enough, what else can they do to make sure this never surfaces again? You brought the historical aspect where uh, the assets of the Igbo people were kept for them. And I've seen a lot of those stories and it's a very good thing. And uh, now this thing has just come up, come up because of politics and all that. But it seems as if the response of government is not enough. What else can they do? That's my question. Yeah, but uh, it, it, it's not only government. This is not just down to government. It's also down to the media and down to people like you and I to ensure that we do not pass on an inaccurate version of history to uh, the younger ones. Because if we fail to give them accurate version of history, we will continue to carry, you know, have all, um, sentiments and have all, um distrust rather than building trust among different ethnics in Nigeria. Um, a government on its own cannot do it because politics by its nature is very busy and very partisan. So therefore, when it comes to elections, you will always have politicians exploiting this thing. There is literally nothing we can do. It happens elsewhere in other countries. Even in developing democracy, we will have the same situation when politicians will exploit ethnicity or religion or some other sentiments, you know, for for, for their own selfish gains. So, but the fact of the matter is, we need to rise above that. Even if you pass a law against these things, you it's, it's still the same politicians that will have to implement it, and they are all involved in it. Politicians of all ethnics is not just about uh, the southwest or uh, the southeast or south south or what no or north they are all involved in it so the bottom line is we are not yet matured enough to allow this kind of uh, uh, divisive politics in our own climate the most important thing is for other institutions such as the civil society organizations the media to consciously work towards strengthening the bonds of the people by narrating the positive side these politicians, you know, when they want to do business together, they don't see who is uh, southwest, who is northwest, who is uh, uh, south south. They they cooperate, they own businesses together. But it's when it comes to political power that is when you see all these things being played off. So therefore, I think you must also lies on us, uh, the civil society groups, you know, responsible individuals, the media, you know, to help the process of building trust within our own country, so that we do not fall a victim of the politicians' antics. Uh, I, and I think that is very, very important. We cannot just leave it to the government. We also have a responsibility in that uh, aspect. Okay.
Uh, well, every relationship needs a uh, um, symbiotic. It should be symbiotic. Yeah, you know, you do this, I do that. And all of us should put our hands together to make sure we stay united. It's a good way uh, to end it. Thank you so much, Mr. Shomi, for uh, your analysis and coming on the show, too. Thank you so much. Thank you. For mm. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Biodon Shoromi and we're looking at the fact that the Igbos are calling for a referendum because of the Igbo must go slogan that came up. And we like the decisive action that the governor is taking and warning strictly that those who are doing this will face the music. And we hope that he will carry this further by making sure that anybody who is caught faces the music because we must stay an undivided country to be as strong as we already are. Every other thing shall be added on to us after this. Amen to but, that. <laughs> but this is how we wrap it up on the show this morning. And we are very happy that you were able to uh, give us some of your time. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an, have an amazing day.